The TerraFlex JL 2.5 inch base lift kit is the foundation for the ST2 and the CT2 lift kit systems. It contains all the vital parts to fit larger tires, it improves off-road capabilities, all while enhancing the on-road experience. The coil springs are designed specifically for the JL Wrangler. TerraFlex was able to maintain the softer JL spring rate and still address the bowing issue, which has been a concern since the JL's release. This is done with a spring design that allows for a shorter active spring without losing coil containment at full droop. The corner-specific rear springs eliminate any side sag caused by the weight from the fuel tank. We will show the installation on the passenger or right side of the vehicle, but both sides can be done at the same time. Raise the vehicle in the air and remove the wheels and tires. Remove the front sway bar links. To disconnect the sway bar link from the sway bar, you will need to use a combination of an 18mm wrench and a 6mm allen to keep the stud from spinning. An air gun will also make quick work of it. After both sway bar links have been removed, swing the sway bar up and out of the way. Remove the bolt connecting the front track bar to the axle. Disconnect the brake line from the bracket. Doing so prevents the brake line from being stretched. Discard the bracket, it will not be reused. Remove the axle actuator plug by pushing in the locking tab. Remove any zip ties or plastic clips connecting the line to the upper control arm. Disconnect the breather hose on the axle. On the Rubicon, there is a locker actuator plug that you will also need to disconnect. Due to the lift kit height, TerraFlex highly recommends the caster angle be corrected. We offer several different options for caster correction. Videos for these options can be found on the TerraFlex website or YouTube channel. Loosen, but do not remove the control arm bolts. The front upper control arms have a heat shield on the frame end. Move the heat shield out of the way or remove it if you want to. Support the axle and remove the bolt on the axle end of the front shock. Raise the vehicle or lower the axle until the springs are loose. Be aware of the brake lines, ABS lines, and any other wires. As much as possible, avoid stretching these. Remove the spring. If you have the Falcon bump stops, install them at this point. These bump stops are included as part of the ST4 and CT4 lift kit systems. They are not included with the base lift kit, but are available for individual purchase. Install the TerraFlex front coil spring, set the front bump stop into place inside the coil spring, and then set the lower end into place. Be sure the bottom of the spring matches up with the spring index. If you need to add or remove the strike pad shims, you can do so through the gaps in the springs. Using the provided tool, tighten the bolt and nut for the bump stop. Included in the written instructions is a tire clearance guide. This is a good starting point for running larger tires on the JL Wrangler. The idea behind modular bump stop strike pads is to allow a customized strike pad height. To optimize strike pad configuration for maximum travel and clearance, careful setup and testing will be required. Lower the vehicle or raise the axle back up into place. The spring isolator can fall out of position. Make sure it aligns correctly. Attach the shock to the mount. Install the new front sway bar link. Reconnect the breather hose, axle actuator plug, and any plastic retainers you removed. It is alright to reinsert the bolt for the track bar while the vehicle is in the air, but do not tighten the bolt until the vehicle is back on the ground. Moving to the rear, loosen but do not remove the control arm bolts. Remove the emergency brake cable bracket located on the vehicle body directly above the rearmost driveline joint. This bracket will not be reinstalled. Pull down on the emergency brake cable and clamp a pair of locking pliers onto the e-brake eyelet. Disconnect the e-brake line from the eyelet. Leave the locking pliers in place until the e-brake line is reattached. Disconnect the e-brake line from the axle. The connector has three tabs that don't press in easily, so use pliers here. 
Detach the e-brake lines on both sides before proceeding. On vehicles with pre-installed lockers, the locker actuator wiring is connected to the e-brake lines. Detach the brackets and you can remove them from the wiring. You will not reattach these. Feed the cables up over the cross member and fuel lines. These cables will now travel underneath the cross member and fuel lines. Reattach the e-brake cables in reverse order, first to the axle and then to the eyelet. Finally, remove the locking pliers. Make sure the cables don't hang down below the axle. Disconnect the track bar at the axle. Support the axle and remove the bolts connecting the lower end of the shocks to the axle. Remove the sway bar links and move the sway bar up out of the way. Detach the brake line bracket from the axle. Lower the axle and remove the spring and spring isolator. Install the TerraFlex rear springs with the factory spring isolator. Make sure the end of the spring matches up with the spring index on the spring isolator. Be sure the rear springs are installed on the correct side. If there is any doubt about which spring should go driver or passenger, then consult the part number written on the spring. To prevent any contact with the frame during articulation, the sway bar link is installed upside down with the swivel stud on the axle end. To connect the sway bar to the link, the provided button head bolts are installed from the inside pointing out. Installing the sway bar link this way ensures the frame cannot make contact with the sway bar link hardware. Reconnect the shocks. Reconnect the brake line brackets. Insert the track bar bolt, but do not tighten until the vehicle is back on the ground. Install the rear bump stop strike pads by placing the mounting plate onto the axle bracket. Two holes on the mounting plate line up with holes on the axle bracket. Use these to attach the mounting plate using the provided hardware. Place the rear bump stop strike pad onto the mounting plate and insert the mounting strap into the slot on the bump stop strike pad. Insert the hex cap bolts and lock washer from below and screw them into the mounting strap. Replace the wheels and tires and once the vehicle is back on the ground, torque all the control arm bolts and track bar bolts to factory specifications. 